<laughs> All right, so we are going to the last session of the day. Of course, there's another, I mean, the last, last session will be the closing one when we're going to announce uh, uh, some of the winner. But I mean, for uh, this, uh, this late afternoon session, we have a special speaker from Adobe again. He is going to uh, share with us something uh, uh, very much uh, that we would like to hear. I mean, it's about the trend of the customers in 2021 and how uh, this trend actually uh, uh, also giving a reason why the brand.com has to have, I mean, why the brand has to have a brand.com websites actually. Uh, so uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Joseph Wibawa from Adobe. All right, Joseph. Thanks, hi, thanks hi, for hi. <laughs> joining us. How's again. it going? Uh, good, good, good. Good to see you again. I mean, after the Very our nice. anniversary now here. All yep, right, yep, I'll yep. Uh, have the states to you. All right. Thank you so much, Pamu, for the time. And uh, well, like what Pamu say, you know, they always save the best for the last, right? So I hope, you know, I'm, I'm meeting your expectations about uh, today's session, so today's topic. And I think um, um, before I start uh, more, right, I'd, just, I'd like to just explain to you a bit about myself. So uh, my name is Joseph. I am actually representing Adobe Southeast Asia team. I am part of the Adobe Commerce team and I'm predominantly focused for Indonesia market. Uh, and today, uh, I really like to bring to you, well, I think, um, you know, I've been going through all the sessions today, uh, most of it, if I can really join, right? And I think there's there's a key message around, you know, what sort of kind of customers insights are you looking at, you know, how the trend is going right now. And there is a special um, report that I'd like to share a little bit more. Um, in fact, actually, Nicholas, my my colleague has explained a little bit in the, in the morning session as well, right? But I hope that um, you know, today's session that I'm gonna to bring to you, it will kind of so-called um, embrace the overall theme, right? About, about this kind of digital wave, like just now Patsal has mentioned, right? So uh, without further ado, um, I wanna check if you can really see my screen. Let me see what I can do to now. All right, can you see my screen? Yep, all good. All right, okay. So um, before I'm going through further, right, I think the key is like what uh, Pamu has mentioned as well. Um, and first of all, you know, I'm, I'm very honored right, to finally be part of this Mid Magento. I've been always a fan. And I think it's it's really great, right, to see the the overall ecosystem right, that's really building the, the team, you know, everywhere. And it's, uh, and you know, Looking into this whole conference, you can really see the power of the ecosystems, not just from the platform of Magento itself. You know, it was acquired by Adobe in 2018, right? But it's, um, and, and we have the enterprise person uh, version of it, which we call Adobe Commerce. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's, you know, the platform itself will be nothing without, you know, the strength of the ecosystem, the team and the customers and, and all of you guys who are here with the developers and everyone, right, to really bring the e-commerce the, the e wave, the digital wave, you know, uh, the way to go in the futures. Right, so just want to give a bit more, um, you know, outlook before uh, to just set the tone of the, the presentations for me today. Right, we're looking at the Southeast Asia market. Um, the couple of next slide that you will see is really coming from the the reports from uh, Bain, Google, and Temasek, where they are really focusing on the Southeast Asia region. Right, and and you will see here that hey, the people of Indonesia, you know, of Southeast Asia, you are you know almost six hundred million total population. And six, Indonesia alone is almost, you know, half or fifty percent uh, of the total population itself, right? And I think that just a couple of uh, facts that I'd like to share. Um, if it's not really clear of what when when you heard the previous presentation and all, right? Um, you know, at in twenty twenty alone, right? And it's it's of course because of the pandemic itself, right? Actually, there are forty million new internet users, right? And and total on the overall Southeast Asia. That alone, compared to the four years it takes for the Southeast Asia market to grow by a hundred million, right? That alone is, is a huge explosion of jump, right? And what is what is interest, interesting here is that you know there's consistencies across all the different markets, 
<clears throat> every market itself, right, experience at least one out of their three customers are new new users in digital services, right? Of course, you'll see here um, about which is across the the board is about thirty percent, right? And you'll see that groceries itself is actually almost half of them are new. Right. And, and when you look into this, right, and you um, in the audience out there, if you are part of the groceries, uh, businesses and stuff, right, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty curious myself, right, whether do you see this kind of jump or whether if you're already in, in the digital, you know, world and you're playing the, the e-commerce, you are having your web stores, whether do you see this kind of increase in, in your in your traffic, right? Uh, because that's that's what the, the service is looking for, right? And I think um, all these new digital customers, right, is is saying is lo really looking very lucrative and very very attractive, right? Um, the the report I'm showing here is is to show you that ultimately, you know, the e-commerce market is is you know leading the packs in this digital wave, right? And what is very very interesting is that you know you're looking into sixty two billion. Um, for the gross merchandise value in, in 2020 alone, right? And um, the report shares that it is growing steadily at about 23% year on year, right? And again, what is very interesting here is that the users that are using this, those, those new users that are coming in this new digital um, because of pandemics and, and, you know, and going trying the first time, right? They are um, saying that they want to continue to do this, to use it. Right, ninety percent of ninety-four percent of them are saying that you know they want to continue, right? Um, for whatever reasons, you know, one of the key ones is really there's uh, starting to have establishment that of the, the the trust itself, right? And really, really, e-commerce um, reading the pack as you as you compare to some other um, you know um, markets and in terms of online services out there, right? So, so just to, just to set the context here, you will realize that. You know, we have 40 million new users, at least in 2020 alone, right? And then, you know, from the e-commerce perspective, you realize that one of, um, from across the broad of, internet, of the digital services, you realize that at least one of three is actually new. Grocery is expanding a lot, right, in terms of their growth, right? And ultimately, from e-commerce perspective, you realize that the, the total addressable market is there in terms of digital users, in terms of the market that you as if you are a businesses in, in this e-commerce area, or even if you are currently offline, this is really, really something that, that uh, a question that you got answers, right? Do you want to be there and address this market or not, right? So that's sort of like a, a prelude to what kind of a customer trend that I would like to share more. Um, it is the, the customer report that uh, Adobe is working with the e-consultancy. And I do provide the, the QR code here if you want to find out further. And there are two key topics that I would like to bring up, right? Number one is what are the key characteristics of these new digital users that you're looking for that you that is already in, in the digital area, right? And number two is that what would be your guiding principle, right? I wouldn't be able to share everything. It's, I think, over 30 pages kind of um, reports, right? And it's very, very interesting if you want to get more insights into this report. But I'd like to uh, use these two to kind of, ultimately explain your uh, maybe ultimate questions, right? If you're offline, should you go online, right? If you're already in a marketplace, should you bring your own uh, brand.com? And what, what is it for you, right? To establish this, right? So the first thing that is really interesting when it comes to the characteristic of these users is that it is um, what we call unpredictable. They're just not just digital, but they are unpredictable and easy to lose. What does it mean by that? Um, if you look at the report, um, the report is actually shares that, you know, the customers now with, because of this digital relationship, right, they have more powers compared to the brands, right? And when, um, and I, I, I remember in one of the previous sessions as well, right, when customers go online and, and you know, surf the internet, find a lot more products, research online, right, the options are endless. Right. If you look, think of it, last time when things are offline with, with, with the, without internet, or everything, you can only buy the things that is really in front of your eyes, right? But nowadays, everything is just at the at, you know in the power of your palm, right? As, and I myself, you know, research a lot online before I'm deciding things, right? So customer has a lot more control. And what is really unique here is that from the the, the characteristic perspective, it's not just the growth that they are looking for. But of, of course, and but also there is a lot of changes 
right? The customer churns also also increasing, and the buying behavior also change, right? So what does it mean for you, right? How are you gonna find this kind of insights? I think that's the key message here. You know, if if we know our customer is changing, how are we adapting to that, right? And that's point number one, and it's it's really across the board, right? I think when it comes to B two B and B two C, it's it's really happening, and it's not just the growth itself, but of course the change in the behavior that we have to capture, uh, and this is the guiding principle that is very, I feel it is really really unique, it's really really interesting, right? Because uh, we real, we say that you know experience is the key, and Adobe we we uh, it is our core vision and core business, right? We want to help customers to to use the customer experience and help them in creating that exceptional experience in your all the products or all the services that you are doing. But ultimately, you know, the key guiding principle here is empathy. Now, empathy itself is the future of experience. Now, people are probably getting confused. What is it about empathy? But I think the key here is that the ability to change that uh, interactions to become uh, to more as of an emotional bond between the brand and their customers. These are the interactions that will set you apart, right? Um, if you haven't looked into uh, my, my colleague's presentations, Nicholas, this morning, he's talking more about the brand's purpose, the brand's, the utility brand, right? What is it about the brand message that you're looking for? Because ultimately, because of technology itself, right, the, the information is coming to your customers as a flood, right? When you search for a shoes online, going to the marketplace, everything, thousands of results is there. So how are you going to differentiate yourself, right? So the key is coming back to the empathy, right? Because you want to make sure that you establish not just a transactional relationship, but you want to set yourself apart by, by establishing that emotional relationship, right? And you, you'll see here from the, from the graphic, is that those uh, customer experience leaders, the company that put customer experience first, right, have greater insights for this kind of motivation and challenges. They'll know what kind of challenge the customer is having, right? They will know and they have more confidence in understanding the driver of the purchase. You know, they'll know more about what is the mindset of the customers, right? And this, this is the kind of confidence that you really want to have, right, in building your connection to your customer. That will be able to set your brands apart and help you in not just growing your business, but more ultimately increasing that lifetime value from your customers and interacting with you, right? And the results with all this is ultimately the reliable brand itself is the one that's gonna win this infinite loop of, of race, I wanna call it, right? Because at the end of the day, if you look at the, the, the chart here, right, you realize that because of that, lot of information for all the digital customers, right? <clears throat> they are trying more brands more often, right? New customers, um, you know, if they don't like the brand number one, they're going to go brand number two very fast, right? This changing is going to happen every time, every every choices in, the, uh, in every customer journey that they have, right? And only those brands with reliable experiences, trusted, right, will sustain and they will go into uh, again and again. You know, they're not gonna just go it by themselves. They're gonna share with their friends, right? They're gonna continue to come back to you, right? Without even going through, uh, they're gonna, uh, without going through any other options, right? Because they established, again, coming back to that experience and the empathy itself, right? Now, um, uh, there is this um, conclusion that I actually got from our previous um, circle anniversary presentations, actually it's shared by, by Pamul and, and Pratius from the head of Midtrans, right? That um, technology has ultimately democratized the access for everyone and has allowed uh, each brand to ultimately come back to the basics. And what is the basics that we're talking about here? Is the core, core, core purpose to shine, you know? So that uh, because of the tools, because of the advancement of technology, ultimately everybody is kind of having the same chance in order to experience your brand, whether it's a local brand, whether it's an overseas brand, right? They have the same chance of experiencing it, right? Because it's so easy to get to them. And ultimately what sets one brand apart from the other is how they're gonna shine in their purpose, in their visions, right? So with, with that, you know, the, the question is that it's really come back where, where you are in, in your commerce journey. And, and it's very important here to understand that it's not just about being e-commerce, right? 
uh, e-commerce become really, really number one, or it's very, very attractive because of you know the, this whole digital wave and the advancement of technology itself. But ultimately, your overall customer journey, your overall customer experience is the key, right? In being that reliable brand, right? In being uh, in building that trust, right? So start to get to know your customer more, right? Whether you want them to connect offline and online, right? How are you in having that proactive communications with them? These are the kind of questions that you want to have. What kind of experience that you have shared with them through the journey, right? Where can they find your products? Is it on your marketplaces? How are you going to share your the message of your brand and set them apart from other people, from other brands in the market, in the market that are full of clothes, right? So these are the kind of questions that really I, I believe in everybody's businesses, everybody's mind, right? So uh, what I want to call is here is that ultimately, should you start your own e-commerce brand, right? To, to kind of build that overall uh, complete picture of whether you are online and offline, how we can blend that together, right? And I think the question here is always asked. So if I think I'm not ready right now, right? So should I start it now or not? Or should I wait until, you know, my, my sales in marketplace is getting more and I'll get more, uh, more data about our customers, right? Um, I think to me, the question is coming to you. It's more on how, do you really want to, co to connect directly to your customers? And that's important beyond just the maturity of where you are in your e-commerce journey or whether you are in e-commerce or in-commerce journey, right? But ultimately uh, the questions, the answers to that is never been yesterday. It's if, if you haven't had it, you have to start now, right? And I think the more important question is that what is your brand's purpose, right? How are you going to differentiate yourself and how you are going to communicate this message to your customer, you know, because at the end of the day, there are so many information that your customer have, right? And how you're going to set that apart and showing that your brand is different and your messaging is different is the key, right? Without knowing your customer, as Patsal mentioned in the previous, um, you know, uh, session as well, right? It's going to be very difficult. So in a way, brand.com allows you, or rather building your own e-commerce platform, allows you to have more control on this area, right? Adobe's will be there and Circle will be there to help you uh, with Pamos and his team, right? They'll be able to help you to have more control in, in not just messaging, right? Communicating your brand's purpose, creating that experience, but ultimately getting to know your customers more. I think the important thing here is that you have to realize that all this is not... Um, it's not a destination. It's not going to be like, hey, I start, I set up my brand account and that's it, right? It's done. No, no. It's everything. is always come back to a journey, right? You want your customer's journey to be able to meet with your uh, purpose, and you want to make sure that your brand's purpose is what your customer knows, right? So it is a marathon. It is something. If you ask me, you gotta start. You know, whenever you think you are right now, wherever you are no matter where you are in your journey, in your commerce journey, right? The, the, the earlier you start it, right? It's not gonna be without a challenge, right? It's going to be a marathon, but ultimately you wanna make sure that you are having that connections with your, with your customers as an overall, right? So um, to close the slides, I'd like to bring to you um, as a sneakerhead myself, right? I'd like to bring you these two, uh, two brands that of course you all know, right? These are Nikes and Adidas. You know, um, and very uniquely, they are very, very doubling down in how they're going to go direct to your, their customers, right? Nike actually ex, uh, exiting Amazon Marketplace um, in the year 2020, and they're really doubling down to, to get connected to the customer directly. And, and that could be a, a, a strategy for him or not, or for you or not, right? But ultimately, we, we, we are seeing, we are learning from the best in terms of what kind of effort they have in order to communicate in order to set their brands apart and ultimately understanding their customer more. In one of the articles that uh, you know, Nike and Adidas has shared, they believe that the more interaction they have with the customers, or uh, if they're the, they know the customers is using two or more apps, the customer's platform value is actually quadruple of it. Right? So that's the kind of uh, insights that Nike is able to have because of the connection and the relationship they have with the customers. Right. So ultimately, um, from the Adobe's perspective, we are here to want to make sure that we can help you in this, in completing this, this customer journey end to end, right? We, because we are here to help you to change the world through the digital experience. And 
without that, I'd also like to share with you our my credentials. And we always work with Pamu and the Circles team together in order to help our customers and uh, allow us to meet you where you are, allow us to understand your challenges and, and help me so that we can really help you in, in, the, your, in your journey as an overall end-to-end -end being online and offline in creating that experience for your customers. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joseph. You're welcome. It's just like last time, it's really great uh, presentations and a lot of insight, a lot of thinking point to ponder upon and bring it to <laughs> sleep tonight. <laughs> of course, of course. Hopefully that's enough to close the session today. <laughs> oh, it's great, it's great. Okay, let me see if there's any questions from the session. Just give me a second here. Actually, there is. Wow, okay. Sorry, Pat Joseph, and this is for Marcos Yup. Thank you for the great presentations. Empathy is the future of experience. I love that statement a lot. Do you have any practical example on that premise? Um, okay, this I is, have a lot. <laughs> uh, or, or probably you want to start first. No, Why no, not? use that, use that. I have a lot of personal experience. <laughs> I lack of empathy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, so, um, I think I think the where um, where I feel that empathy is is really important as a guiding principle in uh, in the futures, right? Is because because we are already at at the uh, the stage where everyone is actually have all the access that is possible, right? And it is it is coming back to the brand to to show that how are you communicating, right? And um, if you look at it, for example, the the current wave that probably starts with with this, right? Um, I'm not sure whether you you I'm sure you know, right? This is mm -hmm. an AirPod coming from Apple, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know I think many of us, <clears throat> you know, try try I mean using this as an example, right? But if you realize that one of the key things that uh, is right now the brands really talking about is how they're gonna, you know, reduce the carbon footprint, right? They're gonna talk about how they are, you know, using a lot more recyclable uh, materials, right? And they are communicating this over and over again in their commitment, right? Because they wanna show that, hey, I'm not gonna just give you something and, and then forget about all these things, right? Because ultimately mm -hmm. the, the, the future of the world depends on all of us. And I wanna do my part in making sure that, you know, we, you know, all our children and grandchildren, great grandchildren, Right, enjoying the same kind of uh, you know happiness and joy that we can all experience, right? So, and that message has been you know const constantly being you know um, you know so called played over and over again, right? It's starting from Apple, and you realize that that message kind of ripple through. You know, uh, I wouldn't call you know Apple is the first one to do this, right? And but you'll see that that's so called like become a common theme in in the retail areas, right? Everybody is going for recyclables, right? And that's kind of the kind of I think one of the key, if you want to you know, think about empathy, how we are connecting, right? Because uh, um, believe it or not, the Gen Z experience is connecting very, very emotionally about the greater purpose, the brand. Right? about the brand with the greater purpose, right? Hmm. Pamu, what, what kind of example you have? Like? No, no, I think I, I can actually add on to that. Even that sometimes yep. brand can, can, can be forget. It's very dangerous uh, when you go into digital world. I mean, it's, it's uh, obviously, it's, uh, the first notion that you feel with the digital world, like when you start shopping like Amazon and stuff like that, it's very cold, right? There's no relationship between you and the actual Amazon. It's almost like robot. They predict you, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what you want, <laughs> things like that. But, but, and when you start to do like a lot of the more like human questions and the relationship, and that's where things are gonna be missing, right? Now, even in the, your example, Apple is supposed to be one of the best, right? Even during the pandemic, even Apple can sometimes fail to do that. Uh, I, I remember back on last June when I went to the Apple mm. stores, uh, not uh, not a, uh, not appeared to me, but then one of the uh, actually the store floor customer service ha uh, there's a lady, an Asian lady, unfortunately, yeah, this probably mm -hmm. part of the uh, tried to get a help. But obviously, obviously, yes, there is the standard procedures. So yeah, you have to be trying to maintain this much. Uh, uh, away, but they have the table in between, so that already gives the distance. But this this lady tried to give her phone because uh, there's things that he, he she need helps. That there's a boundary here when you, when uh, you just executing procedures, and that's where the where technology sometimes just also is more procedures and and the lack of the human uh, lack of the empathy, and then this guy just basically like feeling like afraid. 
and in, in so much that it's like pushing that lady away uh, in the way that I think it's a little bit over much. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, this is something that non, non related to e commerce, but this is something that basically where uh, when we uh, sometimes we have to put the human back into this uh, journey is because of that. I think that's that's what makes people like, okay, hmm, uh, it reflects on your brand <laughs> at the end of the day. Correct, 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 correct. Uh, so you just want me to have this <clears throat> transactional relationship or you really want to have relationship with me? I think that's that's kind of the question I always have, right? Between the brand and the customers. I mean, uh, okay. absolutely, right? <laughs> I don't want to hijack your session, but then that, that's a very long <laughs> conversation actually. Uh, here, I, I have a question also from Rick. I said, uh, Joseph, with the exponential growth in digital transaction, having new customers in 2020, in the past, what's the average annual growth rate? Can you share what was the cohorts in B2C versus B2B? Wow, that's a very that's difficult a question, <laughs> right? Um, well, <laughs> I think I think I don't I don't have the, the data off the top of my head right now, right? But maybe a key one that I'd like to share is actually coming from the previous session, Pablo, uh, mm -hmm. which is coming from Miss Katya, right? Uh, where she's actually starting the 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 B two B marketplace, um, I mean, office, um, office supplies for work from home, right? Data screen, mm -hmm. right? She alone started and experienced two hundred twenty percent grow right mm -hmm. in, in in 2020 alone right so mm -hmm. so i guess that's that's the number that i can kind of you know share with you right now right mm -hmm. um uh yeah so pro probably that that's it right i think the key is that you know um everybody's really the market is really lucrative in that sense because everybody's is really going online and you really mm -hmm. want to capture that as, as soon as possible right yeah, it is. Uh, obviously, uh, industry uh, against its industry will be different. I mean, certain industry right. will be much faster. I mean, I can see like grocery industry is uh, at least twice or triple times that what we see of observation, I think, uh, right. in, in general. And then obviously on the health and beauty, those are areas that Correct. really grow so much. Uh, Even, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, bicycle industry, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, they're having quadruple numbers last time, right? Because of the, mm -hmm. I mean, the pandemic because everybody's trying to have outside active lifestyle more you know going outside and you know bicycles by bicycles. how about how about how about b2b in like more traditional b2b did you see any big changes um, i mean i think that's one yes, of the questions yes. definitely right uh, in fact if you recall to the early in the morning presentations by nicholas right mm -hmm. 80 percent of the b2b right actually wanted to plan to go online Right, and they want to, and and it's not just because of that. It's because of the numbers of millennials actually right now in B two B is already reaching that eighty percent, where millennials is actually you know a lot more savvy around technology and stuff. So yeah. um, have having that experience online in B two B is is really really helping their business. Mm -hmm. And I think for the B two B, I think the, the things like like you said, I mean, because of the millennial now taking over almost all the workforce as well. So they're expecting the way that they they interacting with the B2B vendor is, is similar to what they're interacting in the B2C world, right? They, they're expecting that kind of like seamless, uh, easy DIY, things like that. I mean, transparency, pricing, stuff like that, right? Correct, correct. That's true. All right. Uh, well, um, the last question, I think very similar. Can you provide an empathetic sales experience? Empathetic sales experience. Wow, this is um, really interesting. I think um, I probably need more context on the questions, right? But um, if you have, if I have to answer it right now, I think it's a lot more about you know when we are engaging with our customers, um, it is uh, it has to come more than just uh, you know I want to make sure you buy my product, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's where the questions about you know what is your brand's purpose really comes in. Mm -hmm. and, and relating to your questions, uh, relating to your story as well, right, Pamu, you mentioned that, you know, because of, even if it is Apple, right, um, somehow, you know, the, the interaction is becoming, you know, very cold, right? And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, the brands that can, can bring that empathy in their experience, right, mm -hmm. online and offline will win this, right, in, in this marathon journey, right? Because mm -hmm. everything, it, it's not about, you know, I want to make sure you buy my product. Right, I, yeah. I think it comes back to the to the to the quote by Simon Sinek as well, right? Mm -hmm. That you know, they people don't buy you because of what; it's because of why you are, the why of the product itself, right? 
Yep. Yeah, I, I love that book so much. I mean, I think that's pretty Great. much, I mean, consolidate, I mean, the whole thing about like, why are we doing stuff to the, I mean, this, this whole Nicholas, I mean, talking about the brand utility, the brand, the brand purposes, I think those are really uh, key in terms of the, the, the whole customer journey and, and being em- empathy to the customers. A lot right. of, a lot of, a lot of examples, basically, that you can drive from there. All right, I think that's all from the questions yep that's all from the questions i think we conclude everything yay all right <laughs> thank you, yay. You're welcome. Thanks, thank you so thanks 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 really me. thank you for the support i know the last the last bit is always the hardest one but i <laughs> i like i said i'm keeping the best <laughs> the, uh, the last because uh, uh, and we actually have all, over 120 130 people still staying with us uh, and then wow. across two sessions so there's actually 200 more than 250 so people still staying with us until the last session, which is great. Uh, but I mean, all the recording is, can be uh, just, uh, I, I actually, I can let you go, Joseph. Thank you so much again. Sure, sure, thank you. <laughs> all right, bye. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I think we just have one last closing session, which is uh, starting at 4.45. Uh, we're just gonna uh, announce the winner and I'm just gonna go give a final closing statement on what, uh, on the whole thing. And and just uh, like a, some, uh, instruction on what to do. I mean, after this, and uh, obviously, uh, material is being recorded, like I said, and we're still confirming how long it's going to be able to. Uh, we can open the Hubilo platform for everybody to access. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you guys can stay around, I mean, for the winner announcement, uh, please join me at 4:45. Otherwise, for those that you have to leave, I know it is already an afternoon. Um, I'm say thank you so much for joining us also all day today, and I hope you experience. Uh, a lot of uh, good knowledge, uh, uh, inspiration, and and help you to pass through these uh, changes into uh, what we have to face as a company, as a as a, as a brand into the new uh, digital world. All right, uh, thank you, and I'll see you at four forty five. Bye bye. <laughs>